everyone loses their minds when a weapon class discussion breaks out. Great hammers are too weak. No, swords are boring. Twin blades do too much status build up. You use a katana? That's cringe. Plus, they are all broken. But there is one thing we all agree on. Whips suck. They have less range than spears, they are slower than heavy weapons, and they deal poor damage all around. But most importantly, you can't repost with them at all, because at From Software they didn't bother figuring out how that animation is supposed to work. And as a person whose whole brand is doing stuff wrong, I felt obliged to try and use them to beat the game with all the remembrances. And this was my run. No class starts with a whip, I wonder why is that. But country girls make do, so we can find an easy solution. There is not only one, but two whips obtainable at this point in the game without having to fight. One is called Durumi, and is an interesting weapon in that on some attacks it hardens so it pierces like a spear, and the other one is called... Uh, whip. Still more creative than those in charge of making the repost animation for whips, I guess. We go to Rumi, that is at the Keria Manor, and I was going to explain how to get to it, but like, just don't get this weapon. I was too lazy to go and get the actual whip, but there is another, that I say is definitely better, that we can get. The Allos will give us his whip at the end of his quest in Jarberg, while dying after heroically defending the city, and that implies doing a bunch of invasions, proceeding in two different quests at the same time. But you know how in this game there are some zones where you aren't able to attack, so that you can't mindlessly kill NPCs? Well, apparently this is not one of those zones, so we can whip up a fight, and the room is fully charged strong attack has enough range to space him out and freely hit. It also goes a bit to the right, so sometimes it misses and it's incredibly annoying to watch, but for sure there's a lot reason behind it, and we can take him out easily. Now we have his whip, that not only deals a good amount of damage, but it also has 55 points of bleed build up, that is 10 more than the Uchigatana. It is also slower and use less damage than the Uchigatana, but that's beside the point. As always, we fight Margit at the beginning to have a taste of how hard the run is probably going to be, and after dying a couple of times I went into a cave to get materials to upgrade them. In case you aren't that used to this game, this is not a good sign at all. Also, did I already mention that we won't ever be able to repost with these weapons? We come back and Margit obviously falls, it's not like we get stuck on the first boss, but it took a while. Even though there was some choking on my part, we start to see the two main problems with the whips. The range should be the compensation we have for all the weaknesses in the weapon, or at least for some of them. And that can be true and is actually pretty good if you're fighting an opponent that is around your size. But it turns out that in this game, every single boss you have to fight is at least twice as big as you, with an arm as long as your entire body, or uses projectiles, or probably both, as shown by our dear Margit here. I mean, there is one that is just a bit bigger than us, but has a sword that is 4 meters long. That's uh, 13 feet, as Miyazaki would prefer, and is also the strongest enemy in the whole game. The other problem we have are jump attacks, but if I explain it now you will all fall asleep, so let's at least get to Godric first. On the way there I whipped the dragon, don't worry he likes it, got an emblem for jump attacks, and for some reason I even went to the plateau already. Not sure why, but it's in the name of the channel, so I might have had a point. We can now face Godric, and just so you know, this damage is with a weapon at plus 6 and one at plus 9. I'm mentioning it because it's absolutely garbage. Usually when you have weapons that don't have a great moveset or speed, a good idea is to go for jumping attacks, since it's easy to boost their damage with various pieces of equipment and they are pretty reliable. And uh, since you can even use both weapons you're holding at the same time, with a minimal recovery increased compared to only one of them, the damage is usually pretty high too. Obviously attacking with two great hammers is still going to be slower than one dagger, but whips are just weird. The attack animation comes out pretty pretty fast, but every time we land we have awful recovery times. For some reason, after every attack our character will be kneeling for half a second while crossing their arms, and until this animation is over we can troll, move or do anything else. With this, the whip is probably as slow, if not even slower, than a double great sword jump attack, while not packing even half a punch as those weapons. But hey, if it's the worst weapon class there must be a reason. I then went towards Radan, because it gives us a lot of runes, so might as well do it now, and we can't summon the boys for this fight, uh, since they are not whips. 
our slow attacks line up pretty well in this fight though, because he also has long recovery times after combos, so we can freely get jump attacks in, plus our range is good enough that we don't have the annoying hits that don't connect, happens pretty often with him. And if we space out his attacks properly, we can hit him mid combo, since we don't have to be exactly on top of him to hit. It takes a good amount of knowledge to do this consistently, but in this run I can actually like get hit a couple of times and survive, so we don't need need to be perfect, as getting a stagger feels more like the game mocking us than anything else, and between phase 1 and 2 there aren't any stark differences. Yes, he has a couple more good attacks, but at the end of the day our approach is still the same, so no worries. Or like, extreme worries if phase 1 was a problem too, but I spent way too many hours grinding this fight in past runs to lose, plus he has lion decorations and stuff on his armor, so maybe the whips deal more damage, who knows. He falls first try, with an attack that makes my whole body hurt if I think about it too much. We go towards Noxtella, and we have to fight the Mimic along the way. I won't disclose if the Mimic likes it or not, and to gloss over that we can quickly enter the academy. We are strong enough that the wolf isn't a problem, but a thing that happens often with the whips is that one of the two will miss in the jumping attack, so sometimes it may look like our damage is really poor. I mean it is, just not against the wolf. Moongram is the only fight where the whips are good, because he can't parry them, so we have to savor the moment for a bit, and then it's back to Renala. This boss was easy enough that I was rambling about the game awards and the possible Elden Ring DLC while saying nothing about the fight, but the fact that I thought two bookshelves were missing here. Phase 2 is more of the same, the damage is fine, and we have enough HP to miss 10 dodges and not worry about it. But I did find out that she can have two summons at the same time time, and I had no idea that could be a possibility. From now on, things are going to get a lot harder, so you can subscribe to the channel. Ok, that did not make a whole lot of sense, but I do it still. We have to fight the three sentinel, and you might think it's not going to be that hard, since we can't repost the boss anyway, so we won't lose any damage there, but it was actually pretty tough. If, with Radan, the weapon's attack timings worked on our favor, and they went very well with the fight, here we have the opposite thing. We can't attack mid combo, or sometimes even after he ends combos, because he can decide to use attacks right after that are fast enough to catch us. And if even if he doesn't use them, his wings are all very delayed, making them hard to dodge after a jumping attack. The way dodges work in this game is that if you press the roll button while you are in a different animation, the game will store that action, we call that buffering it, and as soon as the other animation ends, the game will let your character roll at the first possible frame. The problem is that with his attacks, he either hits us during the animation, or if we buffer it, right after the roll. And Trust me on this, it's really hard to keep your cool and wait for some frames to pass after the animation when a huge weapon is about to smash on your head. Also, sometimes you have to buffer the roll in order to be able to dodge, so it's a whole thing. But apparently, if you just lever up vigor, you can withstand many more hits than you think you could, and after some deaths, we take him out with almost no more heals. We get into the capital, and the gold free fight was really scary. Not because the fight itself is hard, I know I can can push through it with enough tries, but he has the same attacks as Godfrey, and that boss fight is going to be a nightmare if our attacks don't work well with his combos. At first I tried with one-handed jumping attacks, but I think they are as slow as the two-handed ones, and after getting caught sometimes I started using one-handed regular attacks. They work well, but the damage is so low that I risk falling asleep if I keep this up, so I tried again with the double whip jumps. I don't think we have any openings to hit mid combos and still dodge the following attacks, but we can wait for them to end and then get one or more hits in. The timings to dodge the attacks are tight, especially if we try to hit after dodging a foot stomp, but number wise we are strong enough that we can just grind out the fight, and if false. I still don't know if actual Godfrey is going to be really hard, but I'm hopeful now. I then wanted to fight the knight that gives us the bloodhound step weapon art, and uh, well the fight went like this. Easy. 
I mean, gravity is not a whip, but we'll have to roll with it. I choked a bit against Morgoth because he attacks too fast, so I went to slap our bold friend in the head and got the shackle. It allows us to pin Morgoth to the ground for a couple of seconds, twice per fight and only in phase 1, but since it doesn't deal damage, it's allowed. With this, we can get 2 or 3 hits on him, times 2, and now that our whips are infused with blood, we can for sure get a bleed proc in, so it's basically a free ticket to phase 2 with full heals. Now the fact that he can easily punish us doesn't matter that much, since his faster attacks don't deal that much damage and the heavier and slower ones we can dodge. So we trade some damage, avoid some attacks while jumping to look cool and the king is no more. Now we can access the frozen lands and all the whip enjoyers know what this means. Uh, no one? No, okay, I'll explain it. We can do a section of the Volcano Manor questline, where we have to invade and defeat 4 NPCs. The first two aren't that special, we just get there and do the job, but after those we get an optional one from Patches. To fight that guy we have to climb up a ravine and then defeat a Magma Wyrm, but nothing too crazy hard. Now we can do the invasion, that is maybe a bit harder than the previous two, but what actually matters is that once we defeat him we can get a reward from Patches, the Magma Whip, that is a whip that shoots magma. Ok, not too creative with the namings, but it deals fair damage and there are some enemies weak to it in the later stages of the game, so we can hold on to it, and then we can do the fourth and final invasion. As you can imagine, we did this now because it's in the frozen lands, and as you can see, the invaded is using the same whip as us and the slowdown step, so it's like a mirror fight, but he's insanely strong and angry, like I killed his brother or something. I mean, I did, but I thought it was in the same line of work. It's only business, brother. Oh, sorry, still an open wound, eh? We send him back to his family and he leaves us with another copy of the Oslo Whip that we equip and power up. Ok, that was a lie since I'm apparently still using the Urumi, but we'll use it later on. Phase 1 is kind of uneventful, like most giant phase 1. We just stand near his ankle and jump attack it until he drops to half HP, but phase 2 is not as easy. Our attacks are too slow and most of our range is forward instead of vertical, so we can't reliably fight him head on, and instead we have to rely on cheap hits to his back. This is why the whips are both infused with frost, that this damage based on his max HP, but it still took a super long time. We don't deal that much status build up, especially if the opponent is annoying and keeps on running away. And if you're wondering why I'm not using the double whip attack while on the ground, it's because I think it's way too slow. After a 9 minute long fight that I wouldn't exactly call high octane, we have no more heals, but the giant falls. We can make a whip from his remembrance, so that's pretty cool, but it's another fire damaging one, so we will probably end up using it along with the magma whip, if we use it. Before going to the godskin duo we have to fight Loretta, obviously no worries here, our weapons are at like plus 20, and then we do a section of Rani's quest to gain access to the lake of rot, because I hate the duo and I want to be as high of a level as possible before having to fight them. Here we meet the shrimp, that is kind of shaped like a whip, so the fight shouldn't be too bad. Our damage is good, and the range advantage is actually helpful for once, obviously we can't outspace it, but it's usually annoying to hit since it's floating in the air, whereas with the whips we never miss, well rarely miss. There isn't that much more to this fight since the whips work decently here, we just need to be careful against the grab attack since we are so slow, but I don't even know how that attack works, it misses when it should hit and hits when I think it should miss. We don't ask too many questions and the shrimp goes back to frying rice. And instead of proceeding towards harder bosses, I'm scared and go for the deer. Moose. Egg. Whatever. Again, the whips are decent here, but like it's a relatively early game boss, so if you have a weapon that allows you to hit it, you won't have any problems probably. It's basically a DPS check. If you deal damage too slowly, it becomes annoying. So unless you're using a shield to hit and it literally falls through the ground, it's all good. Both things happen to me in other runs. Caribou? Melina tells us what her favorite thing to do in the bedroom is, and since the joke is supposed to be about fire, I'll say that it involves wax, quirky way to subvert expectations, and we get to the fight I managed to delay as much as possible, the Godskin Duo. This time, is it going to be somewhat bad? Bad? Or really bad? 
The gauge went up and hit the bad enough that I think I have to delay this fight until I have fully upgraded weapons to avoid a mental breakdown mark, so that's what I did. We go to Castle Sol, since in the Helic Tree and the Secret Frozen Lands there are a lot of upgrade materials, but we have to face Nial first. His knights flinch every time you hit them with the whips, making this part of the fight quite easy. I mean, sometimes we get hit once or twice, but it doesn't matter that much. He then goes into phase 2 and we have a one-on-one -on -one fight, but after his dashes or jump attacks he only has three possible options. He can use a lightning leg attack, that is the most dangerous one he has, but also the slowest, so we can dodge it even after one of our jumping attacks. He can slam his banner into the ground to generate a frost explosion, and this one is probably the hardest to dodge since it has a big AoE and a lingering hitbox, or he can either swing or poke with the pointy part of the banner. This last one is fast enough that it comes out while we are in the recovery frames, so we can't dodge it, but since we have some mobility while jumping, we can manage to let him trigger the attack while we are still in the air and land a bit to the side, so we can avoid it. It's not easy to do and it's somewhat down to luck, but it's also not as dangerous of an attack to receive, so at the end of the day it comes down to avoiding some attacks and dishing out enough damage to take him out, in a teeth clenching moment when we are both one hit from death. And it may look like it's a good thing, but the moment we find a boss that is just a a bit too strong and we can't grind out a fight, we have to actually not get it, we are going to be in deep trouble. Basically it works until it doesn't. From there it's the Frozen Lands, some archers, the Helic Tree and Loretta. We fought Phantom Loretta when we were too strong, so I don't know how her attacks line up with us, but I mean it's still Loretta. The damage we deal is ok, but her jumping swing is a problem. If we are in front of her we can't dodge it after we do a jumping attack of our own, and she has a follow up swing that always connects, since we are in hit stun after the first one, meaning that if we get hit we lose like 80% of our total HP. So ok, it would seem like we need to be a little more careful, but we can actually use a thing that has been in the series since like forever. The hitboxes are actually done pretty well, ignore what I say about them every time I get hit. And after a jumping attack we have a long recovery time, but all that time is spent kneeling, meaning that if we are behind her or to her side, her swing will just go a bit above her head and miss us, so we can be very aggressive still, and a good portion of her attack will miss us without us having to dodge. And again, it's Loretta, so she falls quite easily. We can proceed, with some amazing gameplay straight from the live recording. And... dodge, 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 dodge. Uh, yeah, as intended. And we can make it to Malenia, but she will be on the back burner for a bit. Hey, no! Don't skip to the fight with her, there's a whole journey we are supposed to take here. At this point my fate is decided and I can't run away anymore, I have to actually fight the Godskin duo, I mean I first went to take Vares Mask. Also like… fate, journeys, masks… I've been watching too much Jojo. This fight is tough, because what I was scared of finally happened. We deal too little damage and we take too much, meaning we can't just willy nilly grind out the fight. We have to actually find out when we can hit without retaliation, I mean if we can, because else we have no chance. The whips deal strike damage, so they are less effective against the noble, and since we are very heavily disadvantaged while 2 vs 1, we want to take out the apostle first. As often in this fight, the right way to play is the insanely aggressive one, and this time it's no different, because if we completely disengage and then come running in with a jumping attack, we have a fraction of a second to dodge the retaliation attack. And like, it works really well, but it takes a long time and we need to be able to disengage every time. We can hit after some attacks, especially the jumping one, but even if we would be able to avoid the apostle attacks, we always have to be mindful of the noble, because he doesn't care if the other one is in a fight, he will jump in to stab us. Sometimes that leads to the other one attacking us while we are in hit stun, then again, and like we die on the spot but it's just bad beats, it happens. 
But if we can get in a 1v1 with the Noble, we are in a good spot. And we need to be really aggressive, since after some time he will try to resummon the Apostle. And obviously we don't want to be in a 2v1 situation again. So we might take some damage now, because we are more aggressive, but it's worth it most of the time. We probably won't have enough DPS to actually beat him before the 2v1 begins again, but it should be like a couple of hits from death. If it's significantly more, it's a problem. Then it's another 1v1 with the same rules, then another one again, and maybe even one more. Honestly, it feels like every time I'm here there are more of them. This fight is a DPS check, and we didn't pass it, but given some luck and some tries, like a lot of tries, eventually we make it work. But I'm pretty sure it's only going to get worse from now on. Malikef is next in line, and in the first try I had to get the correct spacing and attack timings, but in the second one I was ready. Phase 1 can be a problem, because if he decides to do the double sweep, we get it. He's too fast and our recovery is too slow. That said, every other attack is low enough that we can dodge, or it simply misses us entirely if we are very close. He hits hard, but we do too, so with some Mias we grind it out and push it to phase 2. Now his attacks are even faster and we have no chance to hit mid combos, but even though that is true, his recovery times are pretty long too, so we can always hit, sometimes even twice, after he does a combo. That said, it's not easy to understand when his combos actually end, because he can chain more attacks at the end or he can finish it early, and if we get hit we take a ton of damage. Also his attacks are sometimes very very annoying. If we get lucky, we can even jump in and hit when he's walking on the ground, because his first retaliation attack is very slow, and this is the way that I... Oh, he's still alive. And I choked. Hmm. You may wonder why I showed me choking a try, and well, it's because I didn't get it in the third, fourth, fifth, or even 10th try. Turns out that he deals so much damage in phase 2 that you can be put to almost death even if a single hit connects, and running away from him to heal is really, really hard. This went on for so long that I decided to have a break, and I went to take out my frustration on Plachidusax, since we have to beat them either way, this is a no remembrances run after all. I still haven't understood how the damage increase on the next work, because like sometimes we deal more, but in this case we deal the same amount to the next or to the tail, so we obviously stand near the tail. But if you know how it works, please write it in the comments, at this point I have no idea. Our weapons being really slow doesn't matter too much in this fight, because they will just try to burn us to a crisp or summon lightning, so like yeah it matters somewhat, in that we are slower to react to attacks, but it's not like we have to dodge swipes and stuff. We keep on whipping the tail and we even get a stagger after a while, but our damage is quite poor and the more this fight goes on the harder it is, because after losing some HP, and then kind of randomly, they can decide to fly away and come back with a lightning trail that is very hard to dodge, and if they are low enough they also have a laser attack that can kill us in one hit. I was playing quite bad and got hit by every attack in the book, so when I got partially hit by the laser explosion, I had almost no more heals, and it went in the air again, I thought it was over. But Placidus Axe is very very resistant to frost, rot, poison and blood, but technically they aren't immune immune to it, so when I needed it the most, the bleed build up actually did its job, and one of the hard fights is over. Now, filled with determination, we went back to Malikef, because sometimes, in life in general, if you are stuck against a problem that you can't beat, going for a walk or even tackling something else helps out a lot. In my case the walk was an ancient dragon that isn't actually a dragon in a place out of time, but in principle it's the same. Also, maybe in life, get Golden Vow if everything else doesn't work, it boosts damage by like 12% so it's really good. And now I like did the same things that I did before, but I actually managed to pull it off by being in a better mental state and probably getting a bit lucky. If you want to see the whole fight or like the whole recording, you can find them all in the live section of the channel. I'll stream them all, come check it out in live too. Gideon is slower than us and gets flinched by every attack, so it's not a problem at all, plus he's Gideon. 
now it's Godfrey part 2. And if you remember, the first encounter with him didn't go too well. Our attacks hit pretty hard, but he has many options that can punish us in the recovery frames, so avoiding damage is difficult. This basically becomes a slap fight, and in case you don't partake in the sport, I'll explain. The challengers, in this case me and Godfrey, take turns at slapping each other in the face as hard as possible. You can't defend yourself, and it's over when one of the two goes down. Ok, it depends on which tournament you attend, but here in the lands between it's definitely by KO. In phase 2 we want to always jump towards his back, that way sometimes we can dodge an attack, and we trade even more damage than before, since now he puts on a relentless aggression. The fight ends with us one hit from the feet, with a last attack on the naked back of the zunk of a man. So I'd say everyone won here. We want to clear out a couple more hard optional bosses now, so I went down to the depths and I'm sure that you are all going to be glad to hear that we absolutely deleted the gargoyles, like they had no chance. To all the gargoyle haters, this fight is dedicated to you. Fia's buddies get crushed, as it's supposed to happen at this point in the game, and we have to fight 40 Zucks. We have two ways to approach this fight. It takes an insane amount of damage in the head, so we can wait for it to put it down and hit it, or we can just stand near the ankle and hit that until it breaks. Hitting the head is easier than usual with the whips, but it's still too much effort, so we simply jump attack the ankle repeatedly. The damage is still good, and the lightning strike that happens when you stand behind it is annoying annoying, but nothing more than that. Now only the 4 hardest bosses in the game remain, so we'll see how far we can push the whips. Moog is first, and the whips will probably give us an advantage here, because it's quite slow, so we don't risk retaliation attacks too much, and the added range is pretty cool for his blood shower attacks, usually you can't hit through that. He is also really easy to bleed, and when that happens he will deal us more damage for some time, but we also deal more thanks to Varra's mask, so I'd call that an advantage, just don't get hit. We got quite lucky in this try, because we managed to get a stagger just before phase 2 begins, so he transitioned with no more than a quarter HP left. At that point a couple more attacks, some bleed and the fight is over. This was a first try and it was really easy, but he's clearly into this stuff, so we had an advantage there. Rikard is next, and obviously we aren't going to use the spear since it's not a whip, and I'd say you can like the video for that. We infuse the weapons with cold, because it is damage based on the total HP, is quite easy to freeze, and if we do it we just lose 5 points of bleed build up, so it's great. The way we fight him is the same as always, up close and personal while taking damage from the lava. But the whips were unexpectedly great here, because the main problem in this fight, especially in phase 2, is that it's hard to hit him. The hurt boxes are not precise, probably because you aren't supposed to be doing this, and with shorter hitting weapons, but even like with swords, sometimes you can't hit his main body. The whips don't care about this though, and they hit through every time with their range. This makes me think it could be intended, since like Rikard is definitely into them too, but what matters is that he falls really easily. Maybe even easier than using the spear honestly, but I haven't got the chance to do that in a long time. Malenia, the hardest boss in the game by far, is next, so we need a couple of upgrades to take her out. We need to go and take the basic whip, upgrade it, and we want to get into the fight with light load and two sets of whips. In one we have a keen Oslo whip and the keen Rumi, because they deal the highest damage possible, and in the other one we have the whip and the Oslo both with cold, because she's really weak to it, and a frozen enemy will take some damage on the freeze, then increase damage for a minute, and then can be frozen again. So we use the cold until we freeze, then switch to the regular two since they deal more damage, and then back to the cold when we can apply it again. It takes just 3 double jumping swings at the beginning, but she builds up resistance to it the more times it procs. Also I know that some of you skipped here from when I mentioned her before, so at least subscribe, it helps out a lot. It pains me to say it, but the damage is like… good? decent at least? 
it's nothing insane and we are still pretty slow, but even though she's incredibly fast while attacking, she gives us quite some time to hit her after, plus she flinches every time, so we can never hit mid combos, but we don't risk if we attack her after. The range is pretty much useless, we want to always be super close to her anyway, but we definitely have a fight in our hands. Now it's a bit harder to switch weapons and to heal, but it's still doable. And you may have noticed that I'm at light load to dodge waterfowl dance, instead of simply using the blood on step. Well, that is because I'm bad at the game and I couldn't get the timing right now that I nerfed it. In phase 2, yes, we need to be a bit more careful, but we also have like a cheeky strat, because at the end of her combos she can decide to jump in the air once more and come down with a slash plus an explosion. And technically, the whips have enough range that you can catch her while she's going up, and you still have enough frames to dodge and hit after she comes down. It's an insane strat, just so we're clear, and it requires super precise timings, but it's pretty fun if you can pull it off. Obviously, I did it a couple of times, including the very end. Now it's time for fish hunting, that I guess is called fishing. And I tried to use the flame whips at first, they look really cool, but they deal the exact same amount as the other two, so we don't need them. Radagon is Slap Fight Part 2, but whips deal strike damage and is weak to it, so they work pretty well, and the fish... Uh, I mean, the fish is the fish, and in the last video I made, it could delete me with every attack, plus it was an automatic loss if it used Elden Stars, so I think I can do it with weapons that aren't good, but I mean, they are still weapons. Also, you won't get a stagger in this fight either way, it swings around too much. And with one last whip slash, I'll say that you can beat Elden Ring with only whips. If you like the video, leave a like or even subscribe, I'll see you next time. Well, you'll see me. See the video at least. Why do I always mess up the outro? Also, let's not kid ourselves. Have you seen Malenia? She's into that too. But consider giving her the whip.